we got a guy, John Calipari, is uh, believed to be agreeing to and signing a five-year deal with the Arkansas Razorbacks to be their next head coach. Uh, he's coming off a disappointing season and a obviously disappointing postseason. Uh, they lost in the first round of the SEC tournament uh, to AM, lost in the first round of the NCAA tournament, upset by Oakland, a 14 seed. Um, and they've only had one tournament win in the last five years. So, of course, we know that he's an all time great coach. Three Final Fours there, Kentucky, one national title. I think it was 410 and 123 and something like that. But um, ultimately, it's a what have you done for me lately yeah. uh, kind of league, especially when you're at a basketball school, just like you would be at a foot, football school. Imagine uh, Texas or somewhere like that. So there's been a lot of pressure on him and uh, John Calipari deciding, hey, man, I'm, I'm going somewhere where he believes maybe he's got his message isn't one thin and maybe he'll be more, he'll be appreciated there more. There's also saying he has ties to the Tyson family. Uh, John Tyson, the billionaire heir to the Tyson Foods fortune, and that they are really close and that that sugar daddy was maybe one of the main reasons as well that he promised him, hey, man, I'll give you all the NIL support you could ever need. Yeah. Um, And that maybe that's a reason as well. No, it's 100 percent a reason. I mean, the, the reason all these guys move is because of donors. That's the reality of it is I think you get to a place you start doing well. You have a couple of seats. Eric Musselman probably would have stayed at Arkansas if it wasn't that he goes back out and says, well, I want to get these recruits. And if I want to get these recruits, I have to have some money behind it. We have to have the NIL to be able to get these recruits to come because even if the other schools may be bluffing, they're promising them a lot of money. And, you know, I need five to six, seven guys that are going to be getting NIL money, and I just have to be able to get that money. And I think at Kentucky – you know, after another loss, Calipari got to the point where he said, "This is not guys are all coming for my head. They don't want to give me money. They're trying to they're trying to cut me off because I'm not winning every single season. But they don't realize because they don't want to support the program means I can't build the program. So it always always ends up if you don't want to actually build a program, you want to win every season, and that's just not how college basketball works. It has never worked that way. It will never work that way. So it's frustrating as a college basketball fan and a fan of basketball of how it's done." to continue to have more and more people that want to just, it's always win now. And if I throw enough money at it, we should be able to win now. That's not necessarily always the case. You have to be able to build other pieces. Uh, so it's frustrating to see it move that basically everyone now is in the place where a coach gets to where Eric Musselman was a very hot guy, a very hot topic. They had a terrible season this year. Arkansas did just a really yeah. bad season. However, he sees the USC job there. He knows that he's having trouble with Arkansas donors. They want him out because he had a bad season, even though he's one of the hottest coaching prospects that he had a bad season. So they say, screw it. We don't care what you did in the past. You didn't win this season, so you must be a bad coach. And then John Calipari has years of testing it. And I, I get, especially if you say he's going there and it's once you know he, he has ties to Tyson and he has the ability to get easy money there, then he'll be there. But if he doesn't win in three to four years, same thing, same, same cycle. Same thing. And it's it's just yeah. a cycle where I, I think you really have to sit back. And, I mean, certain schools are still going to do it and sit back and say, give them a little bit of time. And when things go down, you have to get out. Calipari's tenure with Kentucky was going to be on a short term. We knew that he was getting pushed every single season. People were getting more and more upset. We know that Kentucky was always a school that had a little bit of money behind it, even before NIL. They had yep. some money behind it. Yeah. And when you Very cut big. that off, it just becomes harder and harder uh, to create a program in today's today's work. I mean, that's what I was having the conversation with somebody uh, the other night talking about UConn. And they were it's a conversation that's really weird about this UConn team that for whatever reason, people don't realize that this is a very highly paid UConn team as well. That they're okay, able to, I, I saw a stat about that. I'm gonna bring it up. Good point. And so yeah. you go, well, UConn, man, they're about fundamentals. And you're like, but they, they bought the best players too. Like they're, they're <laughs> fundamentally funded, fundamentally yes. well funded. <laughs> yes, so these programs that are really good at basketball, you have to have a lot of money, you have to have a good coach, you have to have a lot of things, but there's more to there is there is other factors in it. And there's this belief that a lot of guys, if you get the right coach in, you the money isn't as important. Mm. The money is always going to be important, and the good coaches know that. And so they say, you if you hire me, that's great. I still need to be one of the top five funded teams in this country to compete every single season. And it's, it's rough, but that's just the way it is right now. 
it's still and you're right, you're right about that even more so because of nil it, yeah. it was all it was always about the money yeah. but now it is even more so i think it's even more emphasized uh when you're talking about coaches and the players here's a stat for you uconn is the only fbs uh public school um in the sportico database so i'll just throw that out there that spends more money on basketball than football and yeah. they win national titles in women's basketball and in men's basketball. Yes. Hell, they may end up, end up winning back to back. So, th- to your point, they are fundamentally well funded as a basketball. But that's a basketball school yeah. too. And it's interesting. I, I, and I'll throw this out there because I, I do. I think it's it's affecting not only college basketball but college football. When you see schools able to poach uh, coaches from blue blood institutions and in these places like Notre Dame, places like Oklahoma, yeah. And they're able to do that because Lincoln Riley says, no, nah, man, Oklahoma's limited in the in, in the NIL, NIL space. USC has a higher ceiling in the NIL space. I'm going there because in the future where NIL is the law of the land, I got to go where the money is and where there's more money. Even Oklahoma, in terms of football, blue blood, college football, blue bloods is among the top five best programs all time. It wasn't like it fell off. It was still <laughs> really damn good. But he was looking for the upside. Same thing with uh, Brian Kelly going to LSU. LSU back in the day could never poach a Notre Dame head coach like that. But Brian Kelly is looking at it and saying, well, here at Notre Dame, I'm limited. I'm limited in the NIL space here at Notre Dame. I'm also limited money-wise. Obviously, there are, I would say there are, uh, it's just, uh, there are not limitations, but I think difficulty in getting all the guys in school because they think of themselves academically on a higher tier than other schools as well. So there is that as an added layer of difficulty, a degree of difficulty for a head coach. So he went to LSU where not, not only is it easier to bring in athletes, but there is more, more big money yeah. to support college football and what he wants to do. And I think your point is, I think valid, no doubt about it, that, this is now affecting college basketball as well. And you got to have sugar daddies. You got to have sugar mamas too, whatever the money comes from, but you're millionaires and you're billionaires, directives and collectives. They're more important than they've ever been. I was talking, we were talking to uh, shout out to my man, uh, Nick Shuley, who's going to come on for a setless ATX on Friday. Uh, but we do the third and Longhorns podcast with my man, Fozzie Whitaker and Alex Okafor and, you know, Jeremy Hills and Derek Johnson. That's a great crew. And we had Chuck Harris on the executive director of the Texas X's. And we were talking about the powerful network that is the Texas X's and the wealth and affluence (laughs) with that group and the pride that they want to give back to the university. And now it is a force. And Texas still hasn't really weaponized it like they yeah. need to in the United States because it's just so brand new, but they're probably at, they're probably a leader. They're not probably, they are a leader in that space. You know what? 570,000 alumni worldwide. Um, and how many of those are millionaires and billionaires willing to give back? And here's my question too about Arkansas. Arkansas should be more of a leader in the NIL space. Tyson Foods, the Walmart family, Jerry freaking Jones, Dude, just th- them three sugar daddies right there should keep you. Yeah, you should be not only afloat, you should be right there competing with the big dogs in NIL. Walmart, Tyson Foods, t- Jerry, this is old money, oh, old, old money, man. Th- I mean, this is some of the wealthiest people in this world, and they're Arkansas people of all. No, 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 nothing against Arkansas, but they are. <laughs> you know, they went to Arkansas. I mean, something they, against so- Arkansas. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you get my point though why the hell are they struggling in arkansas to you know to compete in the NIL that's, space that's, that's crazy but no but that's not but it's 100 my point though because it's all about what can you do for me right now and i pay for results i don't pay to get results i pay for results you have to achieve and then i will give you money to achieve more and that's much more the thinking in today's nil game with a lot of these uh a lot of donors and a lot of you know where the the narrative used to be able to be shifted better that you had ADs and schools that could shift the narrative a little bit more in the public narrative and shift what the donors were hearing and shift how the donors were going to think about things. And now with the 24 seven sports news cycle and everything else and social media is a big part of it. People get in their bubbles. And every time you lose, I mean, you look at Purdue last year, Purdue last year lost in the first round of the tournament. If they wanted to cut, cut funding and not pay for guys, they wanted to say Zach Eady wasn't going to get paid to come back to Purdue. They wanted to say that we weren't going to, you know, we're not going to give Matt Painter. We should get rid of Matt Painter, too, because we lost in the first round and underperformed. They're not in the national title game right now. So you have to take some of these losses and understand you're not going to win every single year. 
and UConn is one too, they'll they'll tail off at a point, and everyone will then say Dan Hurley's lost it, and then he'll come back and be good again because UConn's always good. Uh, but it, it just is the way of the game that now it just seems that every single time we see a coach struggle for two or three years, instead of trying to figure out the way to get back up on it, and I get Calipari is kind of a, a different example of it. I think Eric mm-hmm. Musselman thing was more shocking to me that they that he yeah. bailed out of Arkansas. As you said, there's money there. There's a low, it's a little bit lower of expectations uh, to then go to USC where it's, you know, you're going to the Big Ten now. It just seems a weird, like, that's not a job that I necessarily would love to go to right now. Uh, so that that one surprised me a bit more. And then Calipari going to Arkansas was, I think he just saw the writing on the wall and didn't want to get fired. And he knew he was going to be, that he knew if he didn't, you know, because if you do get knocked down in the first round, then you say, well, it's really sweet 16 or I, I'm gone. If I don't make the second weekend, I'm completely gone. And they'd really like me to get to an Elite Eight or Final Four. So you just have to ramp those expectations up. And then when you don't necessarily have the money and you get another, you get more guys in the NBA, but you're trying to develop some. And, you know, the guys that you sat on the bench to develop last year, they're now waiting for a check to stay with K- Kentucky. And you lose guys you developed and recruited and all of that over the offseason in college basketball now. It's tough. I get it. Uh, it's just as a fan of it, as a fan of basketball and a fan of uh, the sport, it's it can be frustrating that it's people complaining that the kids get paid too much, which they probably do at points and there needs to be regulations on it. Uh, but then on the flip side, the adults in the conversation also act like children in it. And everyone just freaks out every time like there should be 65 national champions a year. And you go, there's one. It's not going to be everybody's year every year. There's one out of everybody. So you have to you have to sometimes walk away and say, do we get better? Are we working in the right direction? Do we still, you know, did we win a tournament game? That's a big one. If you can get into the tournament every year, you can win a game. I get it gets frustrating, but you're going the right path uh, versus some of these other programs. And Eric Musselman, just again, I mean, was doing really well and everybody was on him. And then this year was really bad, still gets to move up and go to USC. Uh, that, that one surprised me more than Calipari. The Calipari one is surprising because you would have expected him to try and go to another blue blood or another yeah, bigger that's school. What, that's the most, it says Arkansas was able to pull him, but makes sense now. But he, the, I think he also knows he can go. Attached. Yeah. And he knows he can stay in the sec. He knows the teams. He doesn't have to learn new teams and he can also <clears throat> basically guarantee himself at least three or four more years of a good paycheck. Pete Nakos of Owen three who covers uh, NIL. And he also covers kind of in, obviously NIL in college basketball. Um, he said, speaking with a source, John Calipari would have all the NIL cash he wants, and Arkansas is already putting plans in place. Uh, so that's a big part. And the next discussion, of course, is who takes over for him at Kentucky. Um, there are five or six names that have come up already in discussion about this. And this is, I mean, this story is less than 12 hours old or something like that. Uh, he said, Kentucky names to watch would probably be uh, Nate Oates. Scott Drew, uh, some Billy Donovan, Bruce Pearl. These are from Jeff Goodman. Um, others say Dan Hurley is a name they should pe- be thinking about. Um, Jay Wright is thrown out there too. Uh, what are your thoughts about a replacement? Oh, and also this little nugget too. I saw this from uh, KY Sports uh, Radio, Kentucky Sports Radio from Matt Jones. One of the things to remember is that Calipari has no buyout um, if he leaves. He can go and Arkansas would owe Kentucky no money, but Kentucky wouldn't have to pay the rest of his contract. Yeah. That's crazy. He's got a good agent. Yeah. Damn, no, he was, he was, I think, but that was the deal again. This, this Calipari and Kentucky relationship has been hmm. not great for a while now. Hmm. That's why yeah. it's not fully surprising because again, they expect a national championship every single year in Kentucky or at least in the, you know, getting there. And they were in the conversation before the tournament. You lose in the first round. That's disappointing. I get it. But I, yeah, I, it, it's, it, and I'll say it's, it's funny because again, every coaching list starts with, well, we should go get whoever wins the national championship. Every single team in the country thinks that that's a possibility. They should do good. Jay Wright. I, I'd be surprised. He has said multiple times that he does not want to come back to coaching, uh, that he's done with it. Uh, I don't see why Dan Hurley would leave UConn. I don't, I don't, there's no real reason for him to do it. Uh, he's doing just fine there. Uh, he, I, Scott Drew. Uh, Scott Drew. I know that he's said multiple times that he doesn't want to leave Baylor because he's got himself set up. And a similar thing is, I know, and we got a text today. Kentucky gets a lot of money, but the problem was that money started to go to football. 
and you have all that NIL money, and then it starts to go to football. And Calipari goes, no, no, we're a basketball school. We're a basketball school. And they go, well, we're competing, and there's more money in football, so why don't we go in? And that Kentucky team's been getting better. The Kentucky football team has started to compete a little bit now. Arkansas is supposed to be a football school. It's supposed to be. I know. I get that. But I'm saying that if you see that money and the money shifts from, yeah. all right, man, $5 million more million going that way, and here's another $5 million that's going that way to, to football, that's why you walk away. Now they could to try and get you know re you know reinvested, reinvigorated with the new coach. Uh, Nate Oates he just signed a new deal with Alabama, so I doubt that he would be the guy to walk over there and stay in the SEC uh, after what he's been able to do there. I don't know if he would. I it possible. Uh, Scott Drew I think has himself a really good life in in Waco, and it would probably take a little bit to pull him away because he's got he's he's the man. Yeah. What like he can do already. whatever he wants. He, he basically ran Kim Mulkey out of town because of how much success he was having at the men's program. Yeah, he built it. And yeah. so why why would he want to? So that's the thing is you have to be able to find a coach that is that's ready to come in there, ready to get out of their situation. That's more of what you got to find to replace them. No, it's going to be interesting to see <clears throat> this whole, this coaching carousel uh, where it ends up, where it stops, because right now it is spinning. And uh, John Calipari uh, to Arkansas, definitely the uh, most surprising move 